Hey guys, I wanted to share this with you. This is my favorite book in my collection. Out of all the manuals and guides that I have, this is by far the best. And there's a few reasons for that. It's because it's most applicable to where I live in Canada. And another one of the reasons is because it's very straightforward, simple, basic concepts. And really it mix, mixes primitive living with survivalism with camping. Now, the author, Morris Kochansky, really likes to keep it simple. He likes a knife, a big pot, an axe, sometimes a saw, maybe some kind of tent depending on what kind of camping he was doing, but I mean really minimal stuff here. He really kept it simple and I like that idea. I want to camp as lightly as possible. So. I'm going to take my time with this book as I show you some of the pictures because the diagrams are done very well. And just cover the basic concepts of, of what Morris has in here. You can see behind in the background here is my Gransfors Brooks small forest axe. One of the reasons I got it was because of Morris. He covers a lot of axe craft in here and one of the stories I've heard, who knows how reliable the source is, says that Morris wouldn't even go to the dentist without his axe. Everywhere he went he had his axe so maybe that's a little obsessed. Maybe that's a man who knows what he likes. <laughs> who knows? So I mean it's really basic. Here are the contents. Firecraft, axe craft, knife craft, soft craft, bind craft, shelter craft, birches, conifers, shrubs, willows, and really focuses on two animals. That's the moose and the hare. So you see how bare bones that is, how straightforward that is. So he takes those basic concepts and really elaborates on them throughout the entire book. Which is a nice size for the field. Nice size to read. Great by the bedside. You can see I've thumbed through this many times. I bought this one at a thrift shop for four bucks. And I would, after having it for a while, I would definitely buy it for full price if I didn't already own it. So there's my endorsement, guys. So, Firecraft is number one. You can see there's all kinds of really nice diagrams in here. A lot of info. Good mix of both. I'm a visual learner, so I like a little bit of both. Here he is cracking a rock open for some quartz so that he can strike it with a carbon blade. Get a spark. Start a fire. working over his axe handle for a spark there. Tinder fungus. That's the first time I've seen someone doing a fire, friction fire method like this. Very cool. Burning in, making a coal, using the crotch of a branch instead of a plank. A lot that I hadn't seen in any other survival books in here, guys. And that's one of the reasons I would buy this at full price for sure. Sockets, bow set, two-person friction fire. Tinder bundle. This guy was serious about his fires. Look how large he made his twig bundle. Huge. Really basic concepts, but really elaborated on. That's what I like about this book here. Look how big that twig bundle is. He didn't mess around, guys. Shows different feather stick methods and how some are better than others. His favorite knife, now you might think that that looks like a frost mora, and that's because it is a frost mora. His favorite knife is about four inch blade. Just a little bushcraft neck knife. He's very simple with his tools. Oh, big on fire. Morris is big on fires. He likes them large. There's a teepee set up. So you can see why I really dig the diagrams in this. It's well done. Talks about Staying warm by a fire. 
safe distance at which to lay, how to break firewood instead of cutting it if you don't have a tool, or if you prefer to use that method because you're tired or it's dark and you don't want to use a sharp tool and possibly injure yourself. Talks about how to put a fire out safely. Here's some really cool camp craft. I haven't had a chance to try too much of this stuff, but you can bet when I make more time I will. Different cooking methods, different fire methods, different way to hang pots or billy cans, or just a lot of fun in here. A lot of things I'd like to try. Lots of cool firecraft in here. It's got a self-reliant Dave Canterbury edge to it. This book, this manual. I mean, it's just diagram after diagram. Pages full of text. What are we on now? Axe craft. Morris was big on his axe. He liked that. That's about the size mine is. It fits under my armpit like that. That's his preferred length. How to sharpen, how to make a handle. Safe ways to use it. What to look for in a good axe, good handle, how to store it around the campsite. Now this is a diagram that I really appreciate because I hadn't understood just how dangerous a hatchet was until I saw this diagram here. So you can see the shorter the implement, the greater the chance for injury. I learned a lot from this book. Now here's his stance on when chopping down a tree. You can see how far he stands back. There again he's standing quite far back from the tree. You can see it's all in centimeters. <laughs> we have a crazy metric system here in Canada. tree felling, more tree felling. I mean this is the real deal guys, this is a lot like Ray Mears. This reminds me of a lot of the Ray Mears videos I've seen. Just common sense, good old camping skills. Stuff I really would benefit from working on and enjoy. I mean it's not, it's not a hassle or a, an effort when I go out and try these things. It's so much fun. To hew a tree, how to split a tree, where to get the best lumber. I mean, it's covered in here. It's great. Oh, now we're on a knife craft. The bush knife. So, like I said, he's all about the moors. Frost moor, I mean. It shows you different ways to use it, where you're most prone to get an injury. Again, how to treat some first aid cuts, how to cut down saplings safely with just a knife, how to whittle, how to cut different techniques of hafting and making holes, notching, making a rawhide cutter. So if you're anything like me, you'd appreciate all these diagrams here. 
diagrams go a long, uh, long way with me. Like I said, I'm a visual learner. Let's sharpen it. And then we're in the saw craft. There we go. Some safety, some different ways to use the saw. Nomenclature behind the saw, the terms, the parts, how to service it, maintain it, how to build a buck saw, how to make saw horses. They were in the bind craft. I mean, that's very important in survivalism and primitive living, making cordage. Very well detailed. Now we're in a shelter craft. This is one of my favorite parts of the book here. Basic shelter. And leaf shelter. Some kind of leaf shelter that you sit down in and have a snooze or take a rest. Heat reflector. Three quarter teepee. Different fires, where to orient the fire in terms of wind. Different ways to thatch or put siding on your shelter. Different materials to use, what kind of angles. Lean tos. Utilizing snow for insulation. There's a cool looking bench. I saw Ray Mears make one of these one time. Again, something I wouldn't find a chore to make. It would be a blast making it and trying it out. Thatching. Different ways of staying warm by the fire. Oh, this is how wind could be a detriment to the way you orient your shelter or it could be a benefit more lean to you can see most of Moore's fires are complete logs on fire it doesn't mess around bush beds very cool wigwam kind of thing some more primitive shelters there's a teepee talks about the smoke ceiling height more teepee theory and how to utilize. Now look at this. This is a subterranean shelter. I would really like to make this one. I'm going to take a second and let you absorb this one. Try to get a better shot of it. How cool is that? So you get in from the ceiling, just a hole in the ceiling, down that ladder-like log that you see there. You burn a fire during the day with the hole open at the top. Then you close up that hole, not completely, but you know, you want to let some air through. But once you close up the hole, the fire that's been in the middle of the shelter, radiating outward into the all the material around here, the heat has been trapped in the material and will release be released at night when the fire's out. Keeping you warm and dry. Very cool. More shelters. Snow caves. How to make a snow paddle. I've never seen this before. That's pretty cool. For using in snow as a shovel. Different snow caves here. Now we're into the trees. Uses of them. How to identify them. There's a list of the BTUs of different types of wood. Chock full of information in this book. Birch sap. I'd like to try that this spring. I think it's spring. I don't even... I need to read when that's a nice time to do that to the tree because I don't want to kill a tree over a little bit of sap. But I think right now, actually, it's uh, April. I think now is a good time to go try that. 
how to make a broom. Different containers that you can make with bark. Baskets. You can sharpen your knife or axe on this razor strop fungus. It's found on birch. There's also chaga to be found on birch. I don't know if he covers that in here. Look at these. A pair of shoes. You gotta be kidding me. Awesome. Into the conifers. How to identify different uses. Where to get different lumbers. Parts of the lumber, rather. How to split it. How to make pine tar. There's some fun looking camp craft there too. Get a pipe. Now we're on to the shrubs. Different camp craft you can do with shrubs. Now we're on to the moose. Different parts you can eat it from the moose. What parts you can use of the moose. How to find it. How to clean it. How to tan it. How to smoke it. All kinds of stuff. Then the hair. Trap. Tangle, mangle, strangle, dangle. How to use a pelt. And that's it. And some photos in the back. Oh, there we go. There is Chaga there. That's true tinder fungus. And yeah, he does mention that you can drink it as a tea or a tincture here. And yeah, there it is there too. That's false tinder fungus. Some more nice pictures here. There's more there. Hey, Morris. Nice jacket. He's about to have a little snack. There's his favorite Frost Mora. Different medicinal properties that can be found in trees. Resin, I think that is. So there he's saying a, a good bushcraft knife ought to be about four inches or the width of the palm of your hand. There he has it as a neck knife. Some baskets he made. He obviously had some skills from the looks of things here. It's another nice basket. There we are. So there we have it, an excellent bushcraft book by Morris Kochansky. Thank you very much for making this book, Morris. And guys, if you're looking to add a book to your library, this may be the book. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.